This is a list of 10 incredible former Victorian asylums in the UK that you can still see today. The County Asylums Act of 1845, also known as the Lunacy Act, played a significant role in the increase of asylums being built in the United Kingdom. Before this act was passed, the mentally ill were usually held in workhouses, jails, or private asylums. It encouraged the construction of county-owned institutions to provide care and treatment for individuals with mental illnesses, regardless of social status. Here are 10 incredible asylums in the UK whose architecture and history can still be admired by visitors today. 10. St. Augustine's Hospital, Kent. Founded as the East Kent County Asylum in 1872, it was designed by London architect John Giles. In the 1970s, it became infamous for its casual use of electroconvulsive therapy on patients. After closing in 1993, it was redeveloped as housing, but has retained its chapel and its water tower. Nine. Central Hospital, Warwickshire. This hospital opened in 1852 as the Warwick County Lunatic Asylum after the site was purchased from the Earl of Warwick. It operated as a self-sufficient unit, with its own farm and laundry and a spring well for water. While it closed in 1995, most of the main building remains intact as part of the Hatton Park housing development. 8. Mikolova Hospital, Derbyshire. Opening in 1851 as the Derby County Lunatic Asylum, the building was designed in a Jacobean style, with red brick detailing. Patients were generally treated well and it was at the forefront of movements towards a more community-based approach to mental health. After closing in 2003, the main building and chapel were preserved and redeveloped as housing. 7. Bexley Hospital, Kent. Designed by renowned asylum architect George Thomas Fine, this psychiatric hospital opened as the Heath Asylum in 1898. While the hospital closed in 2001, some of the original buildings have been converted into apartments, with the impressive Bexley Hospital Chapel also preserved. 6. Craighouse Hospital, Edinburgh. With parts of the building dating back to 1565, Craighouse was a country house prior to being purchased for conversion into an asylum. After serving as a campus to the Edinburgh Napier University for a time, the site was sold for redevelopment into luxury apartments. Much of the grandeur of the building has been preserved and remains worth seeing today. 5. St. George's Hospital, Northumberland. St. George's was designed by local architect Henry Welsh and opened in 1859 as the County Pauper Lunatic Asylum. While the site has been redeveloped as housing, many of the historic buildings have been saved and can still be visited today, including the original main building. 4. DP Hospital, Exeter. The Exeter City Lunatic Asylum was designed by Robert Stark Wilkinson, and opened in 1886. The principal building contained wards, with male and female patients separated by a central recreation hall. It closed in 1987 and was redeveloped into the housing estate known as Digby Park, but as a Grade II listed building, much of the original main building has been preserved. 3. St. John's Hospital, Lincolnshire. 
Opened in 1852, this former county pauper lunatic asylum had male, female and children's wings and is known to have used electric shock treatment, and invasive brain surgery on its patients. It was closed in 1989 to be converted into luxury homes. As large parts of the historic building have been preserved, this former asylum remains worth seeing for its imposing architectural design. Pyroids Hospital, West Yorkshire. Opened in 1888, as the West Riding Pauper Lunatic Asylum, the Grade II listed administration building features a mosaic floor of the Yorkshire rose and black daisies. Jimmy Savile infamously carried out assaults on patients in the 1980s at Hyroids. It closed in the early 2000s, and has since been converted into a residential development known as Hyroids Village. One. Bethlehem Royal Hospital, London. The most infamous asylum of all time, better known as Bedlam, it occupied numerous buildings across London, but the magnificent 1815 hospital is the most well known. Today it houses the Imperial War Museum, allowing the public to visit and admire its grandeur. To learn more about the history of Bedlam and the treatment of mental illness, the Bethlehem Museum of the Mind in Beckenham is also recommended. 3. Victorian asylums are part of the UK's cultural heritage, but in exploring them, we must also honour the memory of the people who lived in them. What are your thoughts on preserving these old asylums? Are they best explored? Or best forgotten? Tell us in the comments below.